Hello, my name is Kelly. I am the Mathematic Plumber, and today let's talk about running traps. A running trap is a fairly simple device. We have a P-trap with another connection going into it. In this example, I've got a floor drain with its own P-trap, and branching off to the side, I've got a drainage inlet for a condensation drain for a furnace or boiler or any condensing appliance. The most common place you're going to see a running trap is a floor drain inside a garage. So ideally we don't want to put the P-trap in the floor of a garage because many areas in Canada would be subject to freezing. So that P-trap would get potentially frozen solid in the garage and then it doesn't drain so well. So if we have a running trap where the P-trap is inside the building envelope and we run into that, now the P-trap won't freeze because the house is warm. There is very few regulations around the running trap, but we do have one in clause 2471 part 2. A clean out fitting shall be provided on the upstream side and directly over every running trap. And we can see that clean out fitting right in this picture here. We have that clean out fitting going into the upstream side of the running trap. And the reason why it's there, if anything comes down that floor drain from the garage in this particular picture, it'll get built up in the P-trap and we have a means to clean it out. There is one more code clause we should definitely be looking at, 2451 part 3. One trap is permitted to serve a group of floor drains or shower drains, a group of washing machines, or a group of laboratory sinks if the fixtures are in the same room and are not located where they can receive food or other organic matter. And in this picture here, we see a group of three two-inch floor drains that are all joined together and are served by one running trap. So that code clause would allow us to do that. Now what the code is not clear on is how to size this. How do we size a running trap? So if we look at table 2412, permitted hydraulic load from a fixture based on size of trap, we should be able to figure this out. With my example, I have three two inch floor drains. If I look at table 2493, it will tell me that a two inch floor drain is two fixture units each. 2 times 3 is 6 fixture units. I look back at table 24102. Look down the right hand column. It says hydraulic load of 6. If I go across to the left, I need a 4 inch trap. And that's how I size it. Now showers are special. They have their own table entry in table 2493. Let's look at that. If I have a shower with one head, it's a 1 and a half inch trap minimum with one and a half fixture units. If I have a shower drain that's serving two or three heads, it needs to be two inches in size and a hydraulic load of three fixture units. If I have a shower drain that comes from four to six heads, now you need a three inch trap with six fixture units. So this would be more so in a gang shower. Now regarding these gang showers, the code does have something to say about it. Clause 2223, and we're going to start at part two. No more than six shower heads shall be served by a single shower drain. That was already reflected in table 2493. Clause 2223, part three. Where two or more shower heads are served by a shower drain, the floor shall be sloped, and the drain located so the water from one head cannot flow over the area that serves another head. Now this one may not seem evident, but the idea here is if I'm having a shower, and Joseph is standing beside me having a shower, that anything that's coming off of my body doesn't end up pooling underneath his feet. Clause 2223, part four. Except for column showers, when a battery of shower heads is installed, the horizontal distance between two adjacent shower heads shall not be less than 750 millimeters. Of course, that 750 millimeters is a minimum standard and we can actually go further apart than that. And that wraps up running traps for us. So I hope this helped you out and you have yourself a great day.